welcome back. So, last class we were discussing the probability generating function uh, which is a transform uh, which is typically used for integer valued random variables right. So, I there was the small clarification I had to make. So, uh, the region of convergence of the PGF uh, I said so it said they are disks for non negative integer valued random variables and if the random variable potentially takes negative values they are generally annular regions right. Uh, and, but the region of convergence always contains the unit circle right. So, this is one clarification I want to make. Today we will study the moment generating function which is actually uh, defined for uh, defined in general for any random variables not necessarily discrete or continuous or otherwise. Uh, uh, and the reason we will see the reason it is called moment generating function because it generates the moments the nth powers of uh, the expected nth powers of uh, the random variable. MGF. The function MX from R to zero infinity. defined by m x of s equal to expected value of e power s x. The domain or region of convergence of mx is the set dx equal to the set of all s for which mx of s is finite. So, the moment generating function of some random variable x uh, is like an exponential moment okay the, the, exp, the expectation of e power s x where s is the parameter okay. And it obviously this may not exist everywhere and, and the domain in which or the region of convergence where this, this guy is finite is called the domain or the region of convergence of this moment generating function okay. Now, notice that so there is so I have defined it as a function that maps r to 0 infinity right. So, I what I am essentially saying is that this s is something real some real number right. So, again so strictly speaking moment generating function ought to be considered a, a function of a complex variable okay. So, strictly speaking that it is analogous to the Laplace transform okay in so we will see that very soon right. So, strictly speaking we should allow s to be complex right, but throughout the uh, we will be a little bit sloppy about this. Part of the reason is that we have not really defined the expectation for complex valued random variables right. We have only spoken of expectation of x where x is some real valued random variable we have not really spoken of. So, e power s if s is complex e power s by s x will be complex and we have not really described uh, complex random variables in any detail right. So, ideally we should have s is complex, but I am kind of pushing it under the carpet okay. I am not going to be very serious about this uh, and for this reason even for uh, there are many theorems and results on the moment generating function which really require a fair amount of com complex analysis uh, to prove and understand properly right. So, many of in that sense I will only be quoting results and using some properties from complex analysis without uh, being very serious about deriving them or you know proving them 
okay okay so uh, this is so this is expectation of e, e power s x so if if x were to be discrete uh, this is you would just sum up the pmfs right so for example if x is discrete uh, with pmf px of x then mx of s will be sum over x e power s little x uh, px of x right and if x is continuous with density f x then m x of s is equal to integral e power s x f x of x d lambda d lambda d x you can call it whatever you want ok. You are integrating x basically maybe so just to be clear let me just write d x ok. Right. So, it is in this sense that so for continuous random variables uh, this moment generating function is exactly analogous to Laplace transform except for that little minus sign you use for Laplace transform right. Usually you put a minus here for Laplace transform, but otherwise it is the same thing ok. And just like in Laplace transform you in Laplace transform you consider s as a complex number right. Ideally that is what you should do here also ok to be precise, but we will just uh, we will not do that ok. So, just to keep things simple and to avoid contour integration and so on. So, any questions on this? So, let me give you some examples. We have an exponential random variable uh, with f x of x is equal to mu e power minus mu x for x bigger than or equal to 0. Then you have m x of s is equal to integral mu e power minus mu x e power s x d x right. This is from 0 to infinity. This is equal to. So, you just if you just do this integral you will get mu over mu mu minus s or s mu minus s ok. And this is valid for s less than mu ok. So, yeah so if you can just for now s we are treating s as a real real number right. So, we just uh, integral do this integral and you can see that if s is less than mu uh, e power minus mu x. So, if you just uh, take this up you will get this just simplify this. Um, but if s were to be bigger than mu this e power s x is growing faster than e power minus mu x right. So, you will get infinity right in that case the moment generating function is plus infinity ok. So, again so there is one remark I want to make here uh, if you had so again right. So, uh, if you if you were doing this as a Laplace transform right. So, this will become a integral of a complex function right. So, technically in order to be uh, rigorous you have to do this as a contour integral 
okay. Some of you might have studied uh, complex analysis. So, you would have to do this as a complex co contour integral. The thing is you will get the same answer okay and the answer will be valid for real part of s less than mu okay. So, I am I am ignoring that bit here okay. I am just treating s as a real number and blindly integrating it okay. Is this clear? Second example let us do a Gaussian. So, let us do a standard Gaussian 1 by square root of 2 pi e power minus x squared over 2 for x in r. Okay. So, I have to write out now m x of s is equal to integral minus infinity infinity uh, 1 by square root of 2 pi e power minus x squared over 2 e power s x d x right fine. How do you do this integral? There is a very standard trick to do this integral. You have to you have to square I mean you have to complete squares in the top right you remember that it is an old trick. Uh, so, you have to multiply uh, you have to I think do that s squared over 2 and into then you do So, then multiply by e square e power minus square minus s square over 2 and then you will have a perfect square, perfect square in the top right you will have e power minus x minus s squared over 2 right correct with me. So, this is just algebra right this is a standard trick and then this integral is your is a standard Gaussian integral right. So, this integral will become 1 ok. So, the answer will be e power s squared over 2 ok and this is valid for all for all s ok. I will say that for all s in r ok. Actually this is in fact this is the uh, moment generating function for all complex values of s also it is valid in the whole complex plane this is this is not valid in the whole complex plane it is valid for real part of s less than mu if s were to be complex ok. So, I am so far I am just doing all this as real integrals ok which is not uh, technically speaking uh, the full I mean it's fully correct ok. Actually when we do Fourier transform this issue will bite us even more ok uh, when we do characteristic functions right which is like a Fourier transform will this will bite us even more, uh, but for now it is ok ok. So, that is uh, exponential this is Gaussian and finally, let me do Cauchy. So, if you have f x of x is equal to 1 over pi 1 over 1 plus x squared x in r. Now, you try to do this integral m x of s equal to integral minus infinity to infinity uh, e power s x over pi times 1 plus x square d x right. Now, what happens in this case? If s is equal to 0 you get if s is equal to 0 you get 1 right you are just integrating the the pdf itself right. So, uh, by the way I mean if s is equal to 0 anyway you get the expectation of this whole thing will become 1 right. So, it is always 1 that is one of the properties I am going to state right. So, this will become 1 for s is equal to 0. But if s is again pretending s is real, uh, if s is greater than 0, you have a growing exponential competing with a decaying 1 by x square type of a term, right. So, that will be 
infinity right but if s is negative what happens you have the opposite problem because on the negative side it's growing right and 1 by x square is the decay on the negative side as well so what you can conclude if s is not is equal to 0 this is is not 0 this is always infinity right infinity otherwise right with me so if s if you are restricting s to real values only for s is equal to 0 is it defined otherwise it is infinity it is not so the region of convergence in this case will be just s is equal to 0 on the real line it is only for s is equal to 0 is the mgf finite okay but s is equal to 0 is always a part of the region of convergence because as you can see uh, the moment generate mx of 0 is always equal to 1 right by definition so for this particular so okay there are three different cases right so here there is a certain range where it's finite certain range where it's not in the region of convergence here for all values of s then mx of x exists so the region of convergence is the entire real line in this case and here there is only one point in the region of convergence only the origin right but origin is always in the region of convergence and that's all there is in this case there's no, no further uh, there's no further points in the region of convergence is that clear so that brings us to the question is it enough to specify the moment generating function in order to specify if I, if I just tell you this is the moment generating function and this is the region of convergence is it enough, is it enough to specify the random variables uh, distribution or the random variables density in this case completely right. So, if I were to give you this is my moment generating function with this region of convergence is it necessarily true that so for the exponential this is the uh, moment generating function, but is this true that if I only give you this can you conclude that the can I can I uniquely say that it is this PDF or for the for that matter for the Gaussian if I give you this is my moment generating function e power s square over 2 for all s can you tell me that the random variable is the standard Gaussian right. So, more generally if I give you the moment generating function and region of convergence can I tell you can can you tell me the distribution uniquely right so that is the what do you think yes yes, yes or no yes. no who says no yes so suppose i give you this suppose i tell you that the it's equal to 1 for s is equal to 0 and if everywhere else it's undefined or infinity right infinity actually. Uh, so, then what do you say does it have to be Cauchy So, in fact I can have 1 over 1 plus x cube right you will get the same answer correct. So, if this were to be not 1 over 1 plus x square, but 1 over 1 plus x cube with some other constant in front by the same argument you can conclude that or 1 over x to the 4 for that matter right so you will you can easily conclude that it will be the same moment generating function will be defined only for s is equal to 0 and undefined or plus infinity for s not equal to s not equal to 0 correct right so what do you think so generally the answer is no so i just proved that the general answer is no if i give you the moment generating function just like this for example there's no way you can figure out the the distribution but it seems like i mean if you tell me something like that or something like this it seems like you can uniquely identify what the uh, distribution is right so the the complete answer to this turns out to be very interesting but in order to appreciate it you have to you have to know some uh, well it requires some tools from uh, analytic theory of analytic functions um, so the answer is the following if you specify the if you give me the moment generating function 
not at one point, but in some tiny neighborhood of the origin of s is equal to 0. If you specify in any tiny neighborhood around the origin, then that is enough to specify the density uniquely, the distribution is uniquely specified by uh, specifying the moment generating function in a, a, any tiny interval, right. The interval can be very small or very big, does not matter. So, you do not even have to tell me, for example, that e power s square over 2 is the moment generating function in all of real line. If you just tell, tell me this is the form for a tiny interval around the origin, then it has to be Gaussian in this case, and in that case, it has to be exponential and so on. But if you just give it to me at one point, it is clearly not enough, right. So, I will just state this as a theorem without proof. Okay. Uh, this again goes back to the this goes back to the theory of analytic functions. Analytic functions are these you can think of them as these very nice functions which get completely specified if you specify them in a small interval. Okay. mx of s is finite for all s minus epsilon epsilon. So, this epsilon is greater than 0. Okay. Epsilon is any positive number, it can be very small also okay. as small as you like, it cannot be 0, it, can, it has to be strictly positive. Suppose you tell me that mx of x is finite in that little interval around the origin, then mx of s uniquely determines the CDF of x. If x and y are two random variables such that m x of s equals m y of s for all s in some tiny interval minus epsilon to epsilon. Again epsilon is positive. Then x and y have the same CDF. So, this is like a uniqueness of moment generating function. Okay. So, it is if you it is not enough to specify it at a point or a few points, but if you specify the moment generating function in a tiny interval, right? No matter how tiny it is, if you specify it in an interval, the CDF is uniquely specified. Furthermore, if you have two random variables, uh, let us say you know nothing else about them, but you do know that they have the same moment generating function not necessarily everywhere okay they have the same moment generating function in some very tiny interval around the origin okay see all moment generating functions are agree at the origin right because mx of 0 is equal to 1 but i am saying that mx of s and my of s don't just agree at the origin with they have to they agree in a tiny interval around the origin okay then it is necessarily the case that the moment generating functions have to agree in their entire regions of convergence and the random variables have the same CDFs. Okay. So, this is the so this is this kind of a result is possible because the so called analytic functions this moment generating functions whenever they exist 
uh, in a neighborhood they are analytic functions of s uh, of the complex variable s actually and these analytic functions have some very where they have some very tight properties okay so you cannot have two analytic functions agreeing on an interval and then differing elsewhere okay because you cannot make analytic functions by stitching together right because they have some very tight structure okay you, they, you cannot stitch together functions and make them analytic it never works that way okay uh, so that is why this this theorem holds okay this proof is beyond the scope as I said because it requires uh, machinery from complex analysis. Which one? There is no further conditions, right? I mean, I have not said anything else here, right? If they agree in an interval, they agree everywhere. Actually, that has nothing specific to do with moment generating functions. It is true for all analytic functions. It just so happens that the moment generating functions, whenever they exist in an interval, they are analytic, okay? Can we anywhere? Uh, see, the thing is, so if you lay, if you take that, let us say s is equal to 0, mx is always, all moment generating functions have the value 1, okay. So, what I, what I require is that the function be, function agree on some interval, okay. That interval can be anything, right. If, if it agrees on minus epsilon 1 to epsilon 2, it necessarily agrees on some minus epsilon to epsilon, right. So, I can. Uh, so, I can take it, there is no loss of generality in taking a interval like that, okay. Generally, if an analytic function agrees on any interval whatsoever, it will, that is enough. It is always defined, right. Uh, 0 it is always defined, but it is not clear that it will be defined in an interval around 0 as in this case, right. But if it is defined, it is uniquely specific, no matter how tiny this epsilon is. Yeah, you can have minus epsilon 1, epsilon 2 if you like, there is no, there is nothing very sacred about keeping the same epsilons, right. So, is that clear? So, so, so to go back to this, if you give me a function like that and specify an interval in which it co holds then I am unique, I am sure that this is an exponential and that is a Gaussian without even specifying it for let us say the whole of real line. If it is, if you tell me that the MGF is e power s square over 2 in a tiny interval around the origin, then it has to be a Gaussian, the random variable, right. But here you cannot specify it for an interval, right, it is too bad, it is only defined for one point. In that case, it is not unique, okay. So, okay. So, that means, so at some level I must be able to, if you are giving giving this kind of some functional form to me in an interval, I must be able to invert the moment generating function and get back my CDF or PDF for as the case may be, right. Um, there are actually explicit formulae in terms of the moment generating function to get back your, so to get back your in this case density let us say, right. Uh, these formulae are basically similar to the inverse Laplace transforms, okay. But again, we will not go into it because it requires. So, what is an inverse Laplace transform like? It's a, it's a contour integral, right? It's it's an integral of a complex function over a, a certain contour, right? Uh, so, because that's a little bit beyond our scope, we will not actually perform contour integration to inverse any, invert any transforms. After all, if I tell you that uh, the MGF is 1 over 1 minus s, you can just do some pattern matching and figure out what the uh, random variable is, right. So, what the approach we will take is somewhat more what I, what I might call practical rather than very mathematical, just that if you just pattern match, if you see a transform like that, you know it is Gaussian, right. So, we will just figure out some transforms for some popular random variables, put that in your, keep that in your mind or put that in your formula sheet for your exams and you just do pattern matching, okay. We will not worry about contour integrals. 
yeah so most of you must be experts on laplace transforms right some of you will just know uh, will probably have like memorized a bunch of tables of transforms and such so in that case you can pattern match if you have not that type you put it in your formula sheet no problem right so properties properties of mgf mx of 0 is equal to 1 right that is the most trivial property that's by definition second property moment generating property which is why the function is called the moment generating function in the first place right so this i will put as a theorem suppose mx of s is finite for s in minus epsilon 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 is positive then the derivative with respect to s evaluated at s is equal to 0 is equal to expectation of x and generally the mth derivative d s m at s is equal to 0 is equal to expectation of x power m ok. So, what this is saying is that if you take the derivative of the moment generating function with respect to s and say s is equal to 0 you get the expectation which is the first moment and generally the nth moment the mth moment is obtained by evaluating the mth order derivative and taking s is equal to 0 ok. So, this is again so if you want to prove this theorem so there is a i mean there is i will just at a very hand wavy level this is what is happening right you are taking dds of expectation of e power sx right so if you tolerate me taking the derivative inside okay so if you if you do expectation of dds e power sx then this will be expectation of s times e power s x correct I am differentiating with respect to a s right. So, x times e power s x correct. So, this is equal so and then I set uh, s is equal to 0 then I get expectation of x right. So, yeah I mean I guess uh, if you are if you are an undergraduate student this is the proof for you uh, if you are a graduate student you will have to question this step right I am essentially taking the derivative inside what is this expectation after all it is integral right it is an integral x d e power s x d p right. So, this requires a somewhat serious proof ok not a difficult proof but this will be in your homework ok it is uh, I will put this in your uh, next tutorial this requires a 
uh, proof it I, I believe it is uh, you, you have to invoke dominated convergence theorem somewhere in order to uh, yeah it, it requires an invocation of the dominated convergence theorem that is your hint okay. And similarly for the mth derivative again if you are willing to buy the step you can differentiate this m times and you will get x to the mth here right. So, you get the mth moment okay. So, the only real uh, mathematical th thing is in uh, the in taking in the it is you are essentially differentiating inside the integral that requires a justification okay it is not always true okay it requires justification. After all the derivative is so let me give you one more conceptual hint. So, the derivative is some kind of a limit correct limit h tending to 0 of something right. So, you have expectation is an integral and what is outside is a derivative which is like a limit. So, you have limit of integral and if you have to integrate uh, interchange it you have to have integral of limit right. So, you must invoke either m c t or d c t you know only two ways to do it. In this case it turns out that d c t will do the job ok. Uh, so, I will so I will not say anything more about the proof because you will supply this step and then you are fine ok. Uh, so, that is property number 2 ok property number 3. if y equal to a x plus b a and b are real numbers then m y of s is equal to e power b s uh, m x of a s ok. This is actually a fairly simple change of variable ok fine. So, in particular so as an example if you have x is your standard Gaussian and if you have y is equal to well sigma x plus mu y is equal to sigma x plus mu in this case then y will be you can easily show that y will have mean mu and standard deviation sigma be a variance sigma squared right. So, then y will be n you know, sigma squared and in that case m y will be e power mu s uh, times e power sigma squared s squared over 2. Okay. So, you know the you know the m, a, m x of s for the standard Gaussian is e power s squared over 2 right. I am just using this this result to compute the moment generating function for non standard Gaussians as well n mu sigma squared right. I can compute the moment generating function. So yes. That is what you have to prove right. You I am saying that this is valid this interchange is valid, but it is not always valid it is valid in is valid in this case you cannot arbitrarily interchange derivatives and integrals ok. No, you need an inv you need to invoke dominated convergence theorem. This requires uh, this this is not a this requires maybe four steps. It's not one step. Okay, it's a you will do it in your homework. It's a guided proof that you will do. Okay. Good. Now, finally, ha huh, property number four. If you have z equal to x plus y, uh, x and y are independent, then 
then you can show that m z of s is equal to m x of s times m y of s and this is because expectation of e power s z. So, e power s z is equal to expectation of e power s times x plus y that is equal to expectation of e power s x times e power s y. Now, you know that see you know that x and y are independent therefore, uh, any functions of x and y are independent and since then therefore, these two are independent e power s x and e power s y are independent and independent random variables are uncorrelated right. So, this will become uh, e power s x times expectation of e power s y. So, here is where you need and you are using independence here ok. And similarly, if you have n random independent random variables you will just multiply all the uh, moment generating functions in order to get the moment generating function of the sum. So, this is valid for discrete continuous any any kind of random variable right we have not assumed anything in particular. So, this is exactly like in signals and systems uh, if you are instead of convolving functions you multiply Laplace transform and invert back right that is exactly what you are doing here. So, if x and y had let us say they had densities then you would convolve the densities, but that is convolution is an awkward operation. So, it is better to take transforms multiply and transform back right. So, if you want to example if x 1 is exponential of mu 1 and x 2 is exponential mu 2 and x 1 and x 2 are independent and then if z is equal to x 1 plus x 2 then you have m z of s will be the product of the two moment generating functions right which will be mu 1 mu 2 over mu 2 minus s times mu 1 minus s right I am just multiplying the two moment generating functions and this will be valid for uh, s less than the smaller of the two is not it minimum of mu 1 comma mu 2. Okay. So, this is the moment generating function of the sum correct. Now, how will you find the uh, if you want to find what the distribution of z is you will have to invert this uh, moment generating function right. So, now you can use some of your Laplace transform tricks what you are used to in Laplace transforms right. Normally, if you have something like this you write a partial what is it called uh, partial yeah right. So, you will write it as a over mu 2 minus s plus b over mu 1 minus s find a and b and then you, you know what to do right. So, that is fairly standard if I think you can proceed from here. If mu, were, mu 1 were equal to mu 2 you will get mu minus s whole squared ok and that will be the transform of your second order Erlang because you are adding two exponentials. Okay, so good. Then finally, let me just state the final property before finishing. Uh, if you had a sum of a random number of random variables, let us say z is equal to sum over i equals 1 through capital N x i, where x i's are i i d with m g f m x and n is 
independent of x i s with p g f g n and m g f m n. Then So, this is a situation you have considered before I am just trying to write it as write its moment generating function m x of s is given by g n of m x of s okay. and equivalently which is equal to m n of log m x of s. Okay. So, g n is your p g f from the previous class. Okay. The proof of this is using the law of iterated expectations is very similar to the proof we derived in the previous class. Okay. This is fine. So, uh, the most uh, the this formula is most useful uh, in an example of this following kind where you have x i s are i i d exponential with parameter mu let us say and n is geometric with parameter p. I think we considered this example earlier did not we where you had a geometric sum of exponentials right and I think what we did there is just uh, brute forced it wrote out the whole thing and figure out that there is some answer right here you will get a very explicit answer because here you have m x of s is what mu over mu minus s right where uh, s is less than mu and you have g n I know right. So, g n of s g n of g if you like g n of z is what I used right what is the p g f of this from previous class I had p z over something like that is not it 1 minus p z is that right correct and this is valued valid whenever the argument is less than 1 over 1 minus p. So, if I were to blindly substitute here so my m z z is of course, my geometric sum of exponentials m z of s will be equal to p. So, I have to compose. So, I have to take g n of m x of s. So, whenever I have g n of z in place of z I have to write this whole thing right. So, I have to write p mu over mu minus s over 1 minus 1 minus p mu over mu minus s right. So, I have to take care of the regions of convergence of course, right just uh, just do that and I think you, you just simplify this you should get mu p over mu p over mu p minus s actually I did not even compute that uh, because I know the answer the answer has to be an exponential with parameter mu p right Do you remember the taxi example or uh, the word is a taxi or alpha particles either way either, either example will do right you are waiting for taxis which arrive like with exponential durations and with probability p they are occupied maybe probably 1 minus p they are occupied. Uh, so, you have to wait for a geometric number of taxis each of which takes an exponential amount of time to come. So, the total time you wait is exponential with parameter mu p. Okay. So, this is very easy right this is like 3 steps rather than doing that big summation in the previous case. Okay, I will stop here.